All right, today we're going to look at exponential growth and decay, starting off with exponential growth. Here is our equation for exponential growth, and you can see it looks very similar to our um, geometric sequence or our exponential function. Okay, um, with this equation we have our y. Okay, a is going to be the original amount, okay, or the starting value. Um, we have then 1 plus r, r is our rate of growth as a decimal, all right? And then we take this to the power of t um, to represent time periods, but t is really our x, it's our independent variable, okay? Um, for this to be exponential growth, we do have to have a positive a, right? A, a starting value that's above zero, okay? Now, the big difference um, with this is that one there. And the reason we have that one there is if we had, say, a 50% um, increase every time period, um, this would be 0.5. But if I'm multiplying a value times 0.5, right, it's going to get smaller. Okay, So the reason we have the one there is so um, we keep that original value and increase by our rate of growth depending on the number of time periods. Okay, so let's look at a situation. Um, I think for exponential growth, often um, investing accounts, things like that, are one of the easiest ways to think about it. So that's our first situation. We put $100 into a bank account. It earns 10% interest each year. How much do you have after one year or two years? Um, we kind of can tell really quickly, well, okay, it's $100, 10% interest after one year, I'm going to have $110, right? That's pretty straightforward. So if we fill that in, just to make sure that our formula works, we have 0.1 for our interest rate, okay, our rate of growth, and then the time period is going to be one year, so we'd have 100 times 1 plus 0.1, okay, or 1.1, 1 .1, 100 times 1.1 gives me 110. All right, so our formula works, makes sense, okay, um, but when we start thinking about this, sometimes you can uh, make mistakes with this, because if we think about that, okay, one year earned me $10, well, if I go for two, two years, I'm going to earn $20, right, and have 120 and that's not actually the case because of the um, interest that you're going to get or the, the growth that's going to happen on that first year's value, okay? So I could um, go ahead and just plug this in. I've got my $100 still. I've still got my 1 plus 0.1, but now I'm raising it to the second power, okay? So if we do 1.1, 1.1 squared, we actually get 1.21. And if I have 100 and I multiply that by 1.21, I'm going to get $121. And the reason we have that extra dollar is because when we take 10% of 110, we don't um, just have that $100 anymore, we have an extra $10 and 10% of that $10 is going to be our extra dollar, okay? Um, the other thing we're going to look at is compounding interest, all right? And basically, this is the same as normal interest, but we don't compound that interest. We don't get that interest on um, our interest that we've earned every year. We get it more often, okay? So um, the change to our formula is now we have an N in here, and it's in two places, and they kind of counteract each other um, for the most part, all right? So we are going to have um, N being the number of times interest is compounded per year. So if I have um, my interest compounded monthly, I'm going to make my um, interest rate, my rate of growth, much smaller, right? I'm making it one twelfth of the size, but I'm making the power that I'm raising my interest rate 
um, my rate of growth to larger by making it um, 12 times or yeah 12 times whatever that time period is going to be because it's going to compound 12 times over that time period okay so if I plug this in um, really I just need to know what 1 plus 0.1 divided by 12 is so we've got 1 plus 0.1 divided by 12 all right and then what we're going to do is raise that to the 12 times 1, the 12th power. And now we can see that we are going to be earning a bit more money. Not a lot, right? It doesn't have a huge difference. It doesn't change the rate of interest we're getting. Um, but in this case, we would end up, instead of getting $110, we would get $110 and 47 cents right so again not a big change over one year but as you go further and further more time periods and for a longer amount of time um, it will make a difference between how often you compound your interest and if you just do it once a year